He entered Santa Fe. Francis, the man of God, left his home behind, abandoned his inheritance, and became poor and penniless. But the Lord raised him up. Good morning. Good morning. Today's mass is being offered for Dominic Venora. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Today the church celebrates St. Francis of Assisi, uh, one of the major players uh, in the history of our church tradition. Let us call to mind our sins now and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis' footsteps we may follow your Son and, through joyful charity, come to be united with you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. from the book of Nehemiah. In the month of Nisan, of the twelfth year of King Artaxerxes, when the wine was in my charge, I took some and offered it to the king. As I had never before been sad in his presence, the king asked me, Why do you look sad? If you are not sick, you must be sad at heart. Though I was seized with great fear, I answered the king, May the king live forever. How could I not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been eaten out by fire? The king asked me, What is it then that you wish? I prayed to the God of heaven and then answered the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant is deserving of your favor, send me to Judah, to the city of my ancestors' grave, to rebuild it. Then the king and the queen, seated beside him, asked me how long my journey would take and when I would return. I set a date that was acceptable to him, and the king agreed that I might go. I asked the king further, if it pleases the king, let letters be given to me from the governors of west of Euphrates, that they may afford me safe conduct until I arrive in June. Also a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the royal park, that he may give me wood for timbering the gates of the temple citadel and for the city wall and the house that I shall occupy. The king granted my request, but a favoring hand of God was upon me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the song, let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. If I tell you these signs, if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon, we sat and wept when we, when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of the land, we hung our harps. Let my tongue be silenced, if I ever forget you. Though there were captors asked, though, though there our captors asked us the lyrics of our song, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous, sing for us the song of Zion. That my tongue be silenced if I ever forget thee. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forgot you, Jerusalem, then my right hand be forgotten. That my tongue be silenced if I ever forget thee. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place my Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget thee. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
consider all things so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have nests, and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But Jesus answered him, Let the dead bury the dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus answered him, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we could hardly have a better gospel for St. Francis of Assisi. It wasn't hand-picked, uh, as it sometimes is, because uh, this is the set gospel for Wednesday of the 26th week of Ordinary Time. It just so happens this year that I've chosen the fourth, the Feast of St. Francis Falls on this Wednesday. So we have this gospel about people wanting to follow Jesus. They're attracted to Jesus. They're interested, but then Jesus sets out the conditions, and he wants all of them. He wants a total commitment from them. Uh, he tells one person that, I don't have a, a, a house to stay in or a place to live. I'm itinerant. I'm always moving from place to place. So there'll be no, uh, no uh, guaranteed house to, uh, to rest your head. In fact, we know that Jesus and his disciples oftentimes slept out in the open and in the wild. So there's one challenge. Then, uh, then the, the Lord also demands that we uh, give up time with our families. Someone who wants to go and say farewell to their family. Well, no, you can't do that right now because you need to follow me. Uh, even something like burying the dead, which is one of the spiritual works of mercy, Jesus says there are times where we have to let somebody else take over those details because it's so pressing to evangelize the gospel of God. I know that many people who, uh, many religious who live in communities, uh, religious communities, have very little opportunity to visit their family. I have a friend of mine who is now a religious sister in Michigan, and she only gets a, about a week of vacation a year and only gets to see her family now for a few days a year. She loves her family. She's so close to her family, but it's a great sacrifice that she's made in order to answer the call of God, uh, to be a, a more uh, particular kind of follower of Christ. So this gospel uh, is a call, of course, to all of us to try not to make excuses about I can't do this and I can't do that, but to be open to the demands of being an all-in follower of Jesus. And the Lord is the one who tells us what it means at a particular stage and season of our lives. Of course, this fits in very well, as I mentioned, with St. Francis of Assisi, because the Lord asked him to give up everything. That certainly wasn't in his game plan. Uh, but when he came uh, after his conversion, he was uh, somewhat of a playboy. Uh, somewhat of a materialistic, worldly person, uh, coming from a very wealthy family with lots of money, and uh, the Lord asked him to give all of that up and to follow him as an itinerant preacher, not to have a place, uh, a set place to live, although he did have a community that he lived with, but to be open to moving, evangelizing, preaching the word, uh, and, and to not have to have everything set in life. And uh, he and his community lived only on the donations of food and resources that they got from other people. 
they didn't have uh, they didn't have any other means of supporting themselves other than basically begging. They were they were uh, traveling, begging creatures. Now, what happened, of course, is that when they showed up in towns and villages, and people had heard all about Francis and his followers, and eventually his female companion Claire and her followers. Uh, of course, they remained in a, in a particular place in Assisi, but as Fra Francis and his followers began to go out to these little towns and villages, and people heard about them, and they saw this really is true, these guys have really given up everything, they're only going to eat the food that we offer them, uh, they're only going to accept the money and donations we give to them, and they're going to go out and preach the word. What happened was, People are inspired when they see these kinds of witnesses. When people see other people all in for God, it's inspirational. And when that happens, people start to listen to the message and they begin to follow Christ. Now, while I'm preaching this homily, I'm watching people cross all around the back of the church with their dogs and their animals and their cages and all that. It's been a really Rather, and here they come see some more, an amusing procession. Because one of the other things that we know Francis for is that he was, uh, he considered himself to be at one with nature. He understood and reveled in God's creation of all of the world, not just human life, but all of creation. And uh, he had a particular love for all of creation and a particular love for animals and a very close connection with uh, with animals of many kinds, including wolves and other animals that we would normally be afraid to be around. Uh, so today is a day when we have a blessing of animals. Father Andrew is doing this right now outside of church, and we'll have another opportunity this afternoon between 5 and 6 p.m. If anybody wants to drive through with their animal in their car, <laughs> Underneath the overhang over here, the breezeway, we'll have that as well. But just also a, a reminder that uh, God has created everything in our world, including animals. They've been given to us to serve us and to help us and to bring us companionship and comfort. So today, let's think about St. Francis and his giving up everything to follow the Lord. And let's listen to the gospel and Hear Jesus saying, you know, when you follow me, I'm going to ask you to do acts of sacrifice, to give up some creature comforts, maybe to miss being with your family on particular occasions. I'm going to ask you to do things in sacrifice for the good of the kingdom of God. And the question that we all need to answer today is, are we willing to hear the Lord when he says that and say yes to his call? Let us bring our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit provide courage and strength so that all may respond fully and faithfully to Christ's call of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect for all life from conception through natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer because of their allegiance to Jesus, may God instill them the fire to continue bearing witness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world and for the safety of the men and women of our armed forces and the first responders who serve our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations of priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, we may be spared any loss of life or damage to property during the hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for peace in Ukraine and end the war of violence and racism, for a culture which respects life and the values of God, and for the Holy Spirit's outpouring of the church as we begin this, uh, this synod meeting in uh, Rome uh, to discuss what the future of the church can be like. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving God, please hear the prayers we offer, which we make in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we bring you these tidings, O Lord, we pray that we may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross, which St. Francis so ardently embraced through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, through these holy gifts which we have received, that, imitating the charity and apostolic zeal of St. Francis of Assisi, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So once again, the blessing of death under the breezeway and drive through in your car from 5 to 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, the pre-order meal at St. Joseph Hall is at 6 p.m. And the presentation on the Catholic storyteller, Larry O'Connor, begins at 6.30 in St. Joseph Hall. All are invited. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day. St. Michael the Archangel, the Venison Bell, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God forgive you, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the wounded souls.